We are joined now by the star witness, Michael Cohen. Michael, thanks for coming back. Good to see you, George. GMA. You were here with us sitting in that chair in March 2023. You predicted this outcome, so you're not surprised. No, I'm not. In fact, next month, George, is when you and I sat down for that historic change in my life. That was July 1st of 2018, 2018 six years ago, when I turned around and I told you that my wife, my daughter, my son, and my country have my first loyalty. And this has been one heck of a journey in order you to say keep it's been one heck of a journey. How about that time in the courtroom? What was the toughest moment for you? I really didn't have a single moment that was tougher than the 21 hours that they had me on the stand, whether it was on direct or on cross examination. The whole thing was very tough. It's emotionally draining because you have to be perfect. I knew that any mistake that I made would be just um, it, it would it would become the topic of conversation that would just explode. And so I really just needed to stay focused. And it wasn't easy with Todd Blanche. He's a meanderer as it goes to um, questioning. He called you the greatest liar of all time. You've been convicted for lying. Are you done lying? Yeah, you know, I want people to also remember, I take responsibility for what I did. But remember that the lie, we have to remember what it was. It was the number of times that I claimed to have spoken to Donald about the failed Trump Tower Moscow project. I stated three versus 10. I shouldn't have done it, but I did it in coordination and at the direction of Donald, Jay Sekulow, Ivanka, Jared, Abby Lowell, Ty Cobb. There was a whole group of people involved in the creation of that document. I don't, I don't ignore my responsibility. I accepted it and in part went to prison for it. But I don't want people to think, you know, just because you lied about that, I didn't really think it was all that material, but I took responsibility for it. And you're it. done now? Absolutely done. Did you have any moments in the courtroom where you actually had some kind of contact, communication with Donald Trump? Only once. The rest of the time, he had his eyes closed. He was slumped back, not sure whether he was sleeping or just resting his eyes, as he would say. Um, but there was very limited interaction, not to mention where you sit it's very difficult to see the defendant the way that the um, the judge's um, box versus the witness box uh, to see the defendant who's more to the right. Yes, I had a better view uh, to the left of me of the jury than I did of Donald. I'm just wondering what that was, was like for you. You spent years fighting for Donald Trump, bullying people for Donald Trump, even lying, as you just said, for Donald Trump in coordination with his people. Do you wish you'd never met him? I do. I do. It's, this has been enormously difficult on my family more than anything. Um, it's been hard on me, but as hard as it is on me, watching my family suffer as a direct result of my actions and the misloyalty that I gave to Donald, it's something that haunts me every day. So how did you feel when you heard that first guilty? I let out a, just a gasp of air. <sighs> I can't, six years, remember the first time that I met with the District Attorney of New York's people, I was a prisoner in Otisville. I was in my greens. And they came back two more times after that. Three times I met with DAs for New York while I was at Otisville. So this has been a long time coming for accountability. As you know, there are a lot of Republican office holders out here, including the Speaker of the House, who are saying this is a disgrace. They are still backing Donald Trump. What's your message to Republican politicians and voters who are still considering voting for Donald Trump for president? I'm not sure how it makes any sense. This is not just now a felon, convict, but it's also a man who has openly stated he wants to rewrite the Constitution on day one. He wants to be a dictator. Not my words, his words. He wants to... He wants to destroy our tripartite system of government. He wants to get rid of the judiciary and the legislative branch and confer all power to the executive branch, meaning himself, turning himself into a king, a monarch. This country for 259 years has followed one simple principle, democracy, based on the Constitution. He wants to rewrite it as if he could. It's, it's just terrible. So how it is that He's still even in the running. Why anybody would want to vote for somebody who is anti-democratic makes no sense to me.
So the verdict is in, start of a new chapter for you? I have to figure it out. I'm really not even sure where to go, don't forget. Um, it's another year before I can even reapply for my law license. Um, my business, I've lost, you know, banks, very difficult to work with. They certainly don't make it easy for people coming out uh, to reintegrate into society. I'm a little bit more fortunate than the average, but it's still difficult nonetheless. Thank you for coming in today. Great to see you again, George. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.